Well, welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you join us. This year I grew a brand new vegetable. North Georgia Candy Roaster Squash. And we're going to talk about curing, storing, cooking, and saving seeds from this beautiful heirloom squash. This is a very old heirloom variety of squash, even though it's new to me. I ordered the seeds from Baker Creek. I was feeling adventurous. Um, they grow just like any other um, winter squash. Plant them after uh, all chance of frost has passed. See, this is pretty big. Um, holding my chef's knife up so you can see. You cure them just as you would any winter squash or a pumpkin. Uh, you make a solution of one part bleach, ten parts water. You wash the squash in soapy water, rinse it, dry it off, and then apply the bleach solution. Then store it in a cool place away from any direct sunlight. They should last four to six months. This particular one was picked about six weeks ago. This is not something I would can. They would store perfectly well without canning, but you can can these, uh, and I'll post the directions in the info. So to cook it, I'm going to brush it with olive oil uh, all over, and this will just help soften the skin and get all the way around. And see this spot? This is where it was on the ground. It's not a bad spot. It's just grown a little rough. And by the way, these seem to be very resistant to squash vine borers. Now the skin on this is pretty tough. Not as tough as, say, a cashaw. Uh, maybe not as tough as most pumpkins, but it's pretty dense. Um, so we're going to cut this into four pieces. And I'm struggling here a little bit with it. First lesson, um, cut it before you oil it. Uh, it's kind of hard to manage. Once I got the paper towel, though, uh, it was pretty easy to cut on through. And you can see this is just full of seeds. And this is an heirloom variety, so you can save the seeds. And I'll show you how here just in a couple minutes. Then we want to cut it crosswise. I want to get this into four pieces. And I want to take just a minute here to remind you that Insanity is doing the same thing the same way and expecting different results. Hold on while I get a paper towel. I need to add a little stability here, and I usually do this just forgot uh, by putting um, a dish towel under the cutting board. And I'll get the paper towel. Lesson learned. Oil it after you cut it. So I'll just show you a little bit of the process of cutting it only so you have an idea of how hard it is and how much resistance there is. And really, this is nothing to a Kershaw. If you've ever grown a Kershaw, we actually had to get a saw to cut it. It was so hard. But with this one, if you can get through it far enough, it's going to just break. There you go. So... I'm showing you this mostly because I want to urge that you be very careful. Use a good sharp knife. Provide stability under the cutting board. Provide stability for your hand and watch your fingers. So I'm going to clean this out a little bit. Get the seeds and then I'll come back. Like this. This is pretty clean. We'll do all four and then I'll be back. These go cut side down uh, on an aluminum foil lined cookie sheet. I have a little olive oil in there to keep them from sticking. I will deal with this pulp later. My oven is preheated to 350. I'm going to let these cook for an hour. While it's cooking, I'll deal with the seeds. I've washed the pulp off of these and it takes a little bit of scrubbing. Then I'm spreading them out on a dry towel. Be sure to clean off any pulp. And I'm going to dry them now. And let me just show you what you're looking for. See, this is a nice fat seed. It's got a kind of a brown color that shows it's mature. You don't want to bother to save anything that's not like that. You may find some of these little thin white seeds. They're not going to grow. They won't uh, make a viable seed. And see, this one has possibly a cut uh, on it. 
but I'll pull out as many of those as I can right now. And I save seed on typing paper. I, you can see there I've labeled it. Uh, not paper towel. You can use typing paper, notebook paper, a paper plate, uh, aluminum foil. They stick to paper towels and when you pull them loose it can possibly damage the seed. So I always use something smooth. Spread them out so they'll dry. They're going to get turned several times over the next couple of weeks while I let them dry. And I do generally let them dry for two weeks even though a week is probably sufficient. Uh, before I put them in uh, a sealed container for storage over the winter. And you can see that I have way more seeds here than I need. I only used six or seven to start with. But I like to save these fairly rare heirloom seeds to share. My one hour timer has gone off. We're going to check these. And a fork should go in easily. No resistance. And I believe these are done. I'll turn them over to show you the texture. And this is soft all the way through. And you know I've got to taste it. I've never had one of these and I've heard they're wonderful. Uh, it's very soft, very soft here. And you know it's not as sweet as I thought it would be. Maybe because this one is only cured for six weeks. But the name candy makes you think very sweet. But you know, it's pretty darn good. So we're going to see how they peel, how, how we can finish up here. And let me get them turned over. They're still pretty hot, but I did let it cool enough so that I could handle them. And I'm going to try first doing it with a spoon. And it comes out pretty easy. Really no trouble. I'm putting it in a measuring cup so I can measure my results. Uh, there's a, a little bit of the pulp left. I'm going to kind of scoop it out because it's very stringy and I don't want that in my pie. I don't know if I mentioned that my plans are to make pies and my next video will be making a pie out of this. So I'm going to do one this way and then I'm going to come back and try a different method to see which is easier. I'll be back in a minute. The other method is to just break them and peel the skin off uh, and this is so much easier and faster and this is how I will do it from now on. And this is the final results. Isn't that beautiful? And there's a lot of moisture down in here so I'm going to let this sit and I'll strain some of the moisture off before I make pies with it. But I got almost six cups and by the time I strain the moisture off it'll probably be down close to five cups but let's taste it again and you know it really is pretty sweet uh, I may have just gotten a spot that wasn't as sweet I want to urge you to give this squash a try it was easy to grow very resistant to borers I didn't lose a one very prolific it seems to store well it tastes great and I love the idea of helping preserve seed diversity in my little backyard garden. Thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again tomorrow.